everyone, my name is Timalyn Heacock and I'm currently a D1 at Howard University College of Dentistry. Um, I'm originally from Macon, Georgia, but I went to undergrad in Virginia at the University of Virginia where I studied psychology. So no, you do not have to study chemistry or biology in order to get into dental school or to be able to handle the rigors of dental school. Um, but I did have to take a couple of classes after graduating. So I moved to back to Georgia and I took um, some prerequisites at Georgia State University. And I was there for two years before matriculating into dental school. Um, and so if you have any questions about being a non-traditional student or taking some time off, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, but without further ado, um, this is my journey and I hope that it is helpful to you. I first became interested in dentistry when I was about in middle school because um, I just got my braces off in eighth grade. I had had them on for four years and I was so excited to have a perfect smile when I got them off. But um, after a couple of months of having my braces off, my front tooth started getting darker and shorter than the other one. Um, so after a series of dental visits, I found out that I had something called internal resorption where the cells in my teeth were basically destroying itself from the inside out. Um, so that naturally kind of intrigued me, um, but it also made me very self-conscious. I didn't really have that pretty smile that I expected or wanted and waited for. Um, so I was at the dentist's office all the time. I had to get a root canal. Um, eventually I got an implant. That kind of sparked my interest in, interest in dentistry. Um, just the confidence that it gave me, along with like kind of learning how dentistry works on a diagnostic level. Um, and then just being in and out of the dentist's office um, for a couple of years, I saw that it was really hands-on, it was really artistic, just matching the shading of my two front teeth and the, sh and the, the shape and the color and the size. Um, that's all stuff that really interested me because um, I was always interested in art. I was always interested in working with my hands um, and I wanted to become a part of a profession that helped people with their confidence. And in addition to that, I have a family of physicians, um, so I've always had a lot of respect for the healthcare field. Um, but with dentistry, I found that I could do both of those things. So my biggest piece of advice for taking the DAT is study hard and go hard one time. I say this because um, when I first started studying for the DAT, I didn't take it seriously. I bought a Kaplan course. I didn't plan out a schedule. I just bought the course, started going to the online Kaplan classes, and I didn't do the homework after because I was still in school. I was still... Um, you know, taking some rigorous science courses. And so that was kind of my priority. Um, and I just didn't plan to balance the two things at once. Um, so I took a diagnostic test after taking the Kaplan course for a couple of weeks. And I realized that I was nowhere near where I needed to be. So I decided to push my test back and actually take it serious. Um, so during the spring slash summer, um, I dedicated eight hours a day for about two to three months, um, eight hours a day of just pure studying for the DAT. So I purchased the DAT boot camp, and that was actually a lot more helpful for me personally because just of the format, um, it was it's in a video format, and that you know coincided best with my learning style. And so I took the exam one time. Um, and yeah, just the difference in how serious I took it and how much time I carved out and the mindset that I was actually in when I, when I started studying that second time was tr like tremendously different from the first time that I took it. So I think in order to save money and time, do not buy those resources and do not plan on taking the test until you are mentally ready to put in the work and put in the time. In order to make yourself stand out, 
I think that overall, you want to be a well-rounded applicant. Um, you want to have good grades, you want to do okay on your DAT, you want to have leadership, you want to have extracurriculars and dental experiences. Um, so I had good grades, I did okay on the DAT, um, but the thing that really stuck out with my application, I think, was my experiences. So I was a peer counselor, I was a peer advisor, I was um, the president of a health club at my undergrad, and um, I founded a chapter of Global Dental Brigades at Georgia State when I went there. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do it, um, the brigade, because of COVID, but just the initiative and the um, time that I put in with my extracurriculars, I think, was what set me apart. That as well as just having experience in the dental field so that the admissions committee knows that they're not taking a gamble with letting you into dental school. So I did more than enough shadowing hours with different specialties and in gen general dentistry. Um, I was a dental assistant um, at the Charlottesville Free Clinic after I graduated from UVA. Um, during the summers, I did two different pipeline programs. So I did a program at um, Rutgers and at Stony Brook, as I mentioned before. Um, and those really were helpful in me realizing what dental school and the dental field was gonna be like. And it was very informative and it kind of solidified my interest in dentistry. And I think that the application um, committee, they they see that and they really appreciate that. So overall, be well-rounded. If you have one part of your application that's not as strong as the as another, really just focus in and hone in on that part that you are very strong in in your interview and um, in your application. And if you are weak, say, in your grades, then maybe take a master's or do a post back. Do something to kind of counteract um, the parts of your application that are weaker, but overall just try to be well-rounded across the board in all aspects of the application. So to give you an idea of the timeline um, of applications to getting interviews, I turned in my applications in the beginning of September. I got my first interview at the end of September. Um, but I got my Howard interview on November 16th and the actual interview was on the 18th. So they don't actually give you a lot of time to prepare. So as soon as you, you know, put that, in, that application in, start just preparing a little bit. Um, but yeah, so I had my Howard interview on November 18th. Um, it was a virtual interview because of COVID and it was a three hour long process. So the first um, hour was dedicated to getting acclimated with the school. Um, we all introduced ourselves to the other students who were applying and the faculty. We met the Dean, we learned a little bit more about Howard. Um, and so that part was really chill and fun. And the second part, the second hour of the interview was the a little bit more intimidating part that everybody is so scared about um, when it comes to the interview process. So with Howard, it was a two-on-one interview. Um, it was a D4 student and a faculty member. Um, and what I would say about the interview, overall, it's a pretty standard interview, but I will say that the difference I noticed with Howard is that they are not afraid to challenge you. And I think that is indicative of the type of education that you get at Howard. Your professors are not gonna be afraid to push you, to challenge you. And that can be intimidating for some people, but for me, um, I appreciated it. And I felt like this is going to make me a stronger person and a more confident dentist. So I personally liked that style of interview. And it just left me feeling like, wow, I really think I could grow um, with going to Howard. So that's my piece about the Howard interview. Um, if you have any more questions about the interview, you can always feel free to reach out to me. Um, but after that segment of the interview, 
was the final um, hour of the interview, which was a Q&A with the dental students, which is very informative um, and yeah, also very chill. The interview process in general, it's nerve wracking because for a lot of people, it's like their first big interview. Um, it's always nerve wracking to have to, you know, put your whole life into the story you're going to present to the admissions committee and you feel the pressure to be perfect. But my biggest tip is practice. When I say practice, I mean practice. Get a friend, get your family. It's gonna be awkward, it's gonna be weird, it's gonna be uncomfortable, but if you practice, it makes that first interview so much easier. And by the time I like had a couple of interviews, I just felt like I could be completely myself and that's what made the difference. So when I started applying to dental schools, I was not confident in myself. I didn't think that I was going to get in, so I applied everywhere. I applied to 13 different schools. Um, I ended up getting interviews with nine and getting into seven of them. But at the end of the day, something that I did not consider when I was applying because I was so worried about not getting in was the cost of these schools. So for me personally, a big factor when it came down to it was how much money I was gonna owe once I finished my four years. Um, and Howard gave me a scholarship along with one other school. And um, between the scholarship at Howard and the location of Howard, I really wanted to be in the city. Um, and Howard is only one of two HBCU dental schools um, in the US. All of those factors kind of played a role in why I ended up choosing Howard and the experience I wanted to cultivate for um, my dental school experience socially, uh, financially. Um, I just thought it was the best fit. But at the end of the day, the biggest thing for me, it didn't matter all those schools that I applied to that I thought, oh yeah, I'll definitely go here if I get in because um, I ended up getting in and it really came down to the money. So before you apply and spend money on the application, have some confidence in yourself and don't think that you need to apply to a school in every single state. Um, and really just be realistic if this is a, an amount of money you will be okay paying once you graduate dental school. Um, and so that's really what it came down to for me. I think every stage of the dental process has its ups and its downs and it has its stressors. So when I was a pre-dent and I was applying and taking the prerequisites and studying for the DAT, that was a huge stressor and it made me question if I was good enough and I had major imposter syndrome. I didn't think I was going to get in and it really just made me it put me in a negative space mentally um, and I had a lot of anxiety about not getting in. If I didn't get in, what was I going to do? Um, but now that I'm in dental school, I feel so much more confident in myself realizing that I overcame all of those hurdles of the application process. It's really exhilarating and exciting to just see the, the, the growth and the transformation that I have been through even over this past year of being in dental school and from applying and not believing in myself to now like believing that I can do anything that I put my mind to. So I think there has definitely been a mental shift between um, being a pre-dent and now being a current dental student. Um, but the stressor that comes with being a dental student is we got exams every week. Um, we're always studying. So I think it's just really important to make sure that before you get to dental school, you reach a place where you find that confidence in yourself um, and you feel confident that you can tackle whatever challenges come your way. But um, I think the biggest difference between who I was then and who I am now is my confidence and my 
believing in myself. And I think that that has made all the difference. And no matter what the struggle is, what the exam is, I know that at the end of the day, I'm going to do my best. And I think that that just has helped me tremendously um, in my first year at Howard. So the typical day for me, I will preface this by saying I am not a morning person, but we do have classes from eight to five every day. Um, so I'm not getting up at 5 a.m. to work out and study early, no. I'm getting up around seven to catch the bus by 7.30 to be there at eight. Um, so typical day for me, class is eight to five. After class, I come back home. I might relax for like an hour, maybe work out. I started kickboxing, um, just enjoying my time with my roommates. And then I'll start studying probably from around seven to midnight, 1 a.m. Um, and if I have a big exam, probably later. Um, we last semester had exams every Monday, but you get adjusted to it and you learn how to make your schedule conducive to learning little bits of information at a time. I do find time for personal care um, and for doing things that I enjoy. Um, so I play the piano, I sing, I do art, I might do a paint and sip with my friends. Um, with some friends from dental school, we'll sometimes go out to a happy hour. So dental school isn't just miserable all the time and studying doesn't have to be miserable all the time. Um, I have study groups where I study with my friends. It can be um, helpful for learning the information, but also in those little breaks that you have when you're laughing with each other, studying doesn't feel so bad. Um, yeah, with all that being said, um, typical day, eight to five class and after that is just studying but I do find time um, to make myself happy and do stuff that I enjoy. Something that really excites me about Howard is the people and the opportunities that I think Howard brings. Um, so dental school is hard and the only thing that I think gets me through the challenges every day is the people that I have surrounded myself with here. So that's why I think that when you're in your interview, it's so important to pay attention to the faculty, the deans, um, the students, the people that you are gonna be interacting with for the next four years. Um, and you get insight into that in the interview. So don't just be so nervous in the interview that you're not thinking about who is actually in this call or in this room with me like actually take all of those things into consideration um the faculty always is advocating for the students um i've noticed that this semester when we've had challenges or conflicts with exams we reach out to faculty and we have gotten things changed because the faculty cares and wants the best for us um and even just little things like i remember my first semester um, just noticing that everybody was always so excited to see the security guard at the entrance of the dental school and they would bring him coffee and there was just a nice camaraderie between the students and the faculty and the staff um, that I think makes Howard exciting. Um, and on top of that, um, after uh, my first semester, I performed really well in one of my classes and my professor reached out to me and has tried to schedule times for me to meet up with oral surgeons and other dentists. And I just think that that's something that is unique to Howard. Um, you have professors really believing in you, challenging you, presenting you with opportunities, and they really care for you. So that's what I really like about Howard. My biggest piece of advice in applying to dental school is to believe in yourself. Um, I remember when I first started studying for the DAT and just seeing how many hours a day I was supposed to spend studying and really just putting things into perspective and realizing how difficult it was going to be. I remember thinking other people have done this. Other people think this is easy. Like, what am I getting myself into? 
I was intimidated, I was overwhelmed, and I just thought I couldn't do it. I thought I wasn't good enough. Um, but I talked to my family and I told them and I had a little bit of a meltdown and they were just like, Timelin, the only person who doesn't believe in you is you. Um, and so that kind of put things into perspective for me and I had to really sit down and dig deep and challenge myself to yeah, this is not going to be easy, but that doesn't mean I can't do it. This is not going to be easy, but that doesn't mean I'm not good enough. And so the process of applying, I think, really made me more confident in myself. It was de definitely difficult at times, but finding that confidence and believing in yourself early is going to really help the process more smooth, be more smooth and more enjoyable. So I think the earlier you have you find that confidence in yourself um, and believe in yourself, the sooner you're going to be able to enjoy the process and really be on the journey to like becoming the best dentist that you can be. I'm going to drop my socials so that you can reach out with any questions that you have regarding any topics that were covered in the video or anything beyond that. If you have a question that was left unanswered, please reach out to me and I'll get back to you. Um, but yeah, good luck with applying to dental school. I know that you are going to get in. Um, and I hope that this advice was helpful. If there's anything, like I said, that you um, that's still unanswered, please reach out to me um, and I hope that I can help.